What is up everyone? It's Thomas with Real Broker here in St. Augustine, Florida. Coming at you live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Going over the market stats, the news you need to know about if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing here in Northeastern Florida. And we're doing a Q&A. So if you're watching it live, watching the replay, make sure you throw some comments below or some questions. I'm here for you every single week. So this is your time. So go ahead and ask questions. And uh, especially if you're watching a replay, I always come back to the comments. You know, sometimes it may take me a couple days, but I will get back to you. So uh, we're going to start off by hopping into the market stats. And I'm just going to take a look at the market stats that we have from the market distillery report, which I think is probably one of the best resources that I have as a realtor. Um, and I'm going to just cover a couple slides just so you guys can see. Um, main thing to know is that uh, median sale price and average sale price is is up year to date, um, year over year. Uh, not year to date, it's up year over year. Year to date, it's actually down slightly for average and up slightly for median, uh, median price. Um, but I wanted to focus on this right here, uh, the closed sales by subdivision. So this is essentially showing the top 15 neighborhoods within St. John's County, or not, not St. John's County, but Northeastern Florida as a whole that are selling the best. A good portion of them are in St. John's County. You, know, you can see almost half of the list here is selling within St. John's County. So that is a good sign. The majority of these neighborhoods are all new construction. Um, Nocti has new construction, but of course it's a huge community. Beacon Lake, Cordova Palms, new construction. Waterford Lakes, new construction. Um, Ravenswood Village, new construction. And Trotta, new construction. Shearwater, all new construction. So. Um, all these, if you're looking for a deal, these are the neighborhoods that people are gravitating towards most, right? And I think that's something, you know, if you're looking to buy a home and you're kind of worried about what's going on with the market, then follow what everyone else is doing. They're buying in these neighborhoods and these neighborhoods are in demand for certain reasons, correct? So let's go ahead and scroll down here. We're going to take a look at seasonality and that's just what happens in our market uh, throughout the years. So as you can see, the average price with seasonality, they compare to the villages just north of Orlando, Palm Beach County, and Jacksonville. When we're talking about Jacksonville, once again, we're talking about the metro service area. So Duval County, St. John's County, Clay County, Nassau County, all grouped up into one. Um, and as you can see, uh, as we hit the summertime for pretty much all markets, regardless, that's when you're going to see the highest sale price. Now we're comparing average sale price to the historic pattern. So the average sale price in 2024 is down from uh, from February because January was very, very different. It was much, much slower. So it went down into the average price seasonality closings. We actually went up. This is the historic pattern within our area. Um, and this is also something to think of too, like our area, a lot of people have moved here. so this historic pattern, I imagine we would see higher numbers because we have more people in this area. We have more homes for sale than we did historically or, you know, really in, in St. John's County, but also in Northeastern Florida, because we have drastically changed here in Northeastern Florida over the last four years. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, that this is taking a lot of data versus probably this is just this year, right? So um, I imagine this will always outpace the historic pattern because of how quickly things have changed. Active listings. So once again, that historic active listing here, bigger rise this year for active listings, but still below long term averages. Um, so we are right now in a balanced market. We're right in the middle. It's, it's not a buyer's market. It's not a seller's market. We're right in the middle, which is great. Um, and this is based off of just our regular statistics, um, based off our historical averages of everything. Right. So this is that pattern here. And this is where we are right now with our total active listings, counting all of the counties, the Jacksonville Metro service area that surround essentially Duval County. Then new listing, new listings are actually up year over year, um, but typically that happens when we get into March, right? Now, comparatively to our historical average, it is much higher, but once again, I think everything is going to outpace our historical average because of how many people have moved here, how much more new development has happened here. Um, and, and March is one of those months where things start to pick up. So March through essentially the end of summer, we're going to see more activity in the market. Okay. So that's what I wanted to show just a little touch on some of the market data. We'll hop into the new stories that you guys need to know about. Um, and actually something really cool happened. Uh, CB, who is one of our, our viewers uh, of the weekly show here, he actually submitted a 
uh, news report for me to check out. And uh, let me see, I'll pull that one up here first. Do, 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 do. Where is it? This one, I guess. So this is something that we talk about quite often. Um, you know, I hope you guys know by now, I am an advocate for affordable housing, but of course, every time affordable housing gets pitched, the local neighbors want to shoot it down because when people think of affordable housing, they, they automatically say, oh, that's going to be project housing. That's going to be section eight housing. That's going to right off the bat. That's what everyone thinks. Uh, it's not me saying that it is just literally what you can find on the internet. Um, go to Facebook and you can see that people you know put this, they post it on St. Augustine news. Um, and they'll, they'll talk about how this is terrible and, and that this is, but the people that are saying that it's terrible, they're completely out of touch, you know, just being in reality, like they're, they're not living in reality. Like my generation doesn't make the amount of money that can afford to live here. It's all people moving in here, um, that one have remote jobs that could be from my generation, but they're more than likely a little bit older. And also then you have people that are retiring here. So that, that demographic, those two people is makes up 50% of the people that are moving into our area and they make over $150,000 a year collectively. Most people don't make that kind of money if you you're from here and you've been living and working here because there's just not those kind of jobs around. So, um, more apartments labeled as low cost housing could be coming to St. John's County developer wants to bring 180 new multifamily apartments to 23 acres off of County Road 208. Now, of course, Charles Lebowski, they always default this. He lives about 10 minutes from the property. He says that it's growing too fast and the infrastructure just can't handle it. His concern is that the traffic is going to get worse where that is. Now, um, 16 and 95 is really a shit show. I'm going to show you guys here on the map here. Um, So this is County Road 208. I actually drove by this today um, and I was late to an appointment because 16 and 95, there was a car accident. Um, so it, it really is a pain um, when you do need to go go places where this used to not be a problem at all. It used to be very easy to get in and out and off this exit and get through it. But there is a ton of construction. They are, they are doing some um, infrastructure improvements to that area, just taking forever. And it, it really is annoying. So I think the place that he's talking about is right over here. It's somewhere in this area, um, right where you have the subdivision. As you can see, 16 follows north here, and that's where you're going to end up into like Silverleaf is over here. Uh, excuse me, Trailmark is down here. A lot of these master plan communities that I have on my channel with neighborhood tours, all the new construction is really up in this area in the northwestern part of St. John's County, north of 16. County Road 208 is a country road. There is nothing on it, as you can see. Most of it is green space. They even have a equestrian farm here. Uh, it's, it's very empty. You know, this is really like the only subdivision on it. Um, and there's one or two more, but they're, they're not humongous subdivisions like we're seeing further north. Um, so they're talking about putting it on this road. And he said that's going to cause an issue with traffic. So, like, I mean, it's very possible because 16 is already a problem. Um, but he also cites that this is a bad area for it because they need to be closer to downtown. I mean, really, I, I lived right there. Um, I live on the east side of 95 now, right at the townhouses there. And for me to get downtown, it was a 12 minute drive. So for those guys to get downtown, if you're working downtown, it might be a 15, 20 minute drive, depending on where on 208 they wanted to build. I'm pretty sure I know where it's at because I saw the zoning sign. Um, but this is, and CB's on here, let's go CB. But this is a fact, everyone says this, uh, not in my backyard. It's not in anyone's backyard. They just don't want it. Now devil's advocate here. Um, you know, I want affordable housing, but let's just take a look at this article real quick. Um, and you let me know what you think about this. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's kind of actually hilarious, right? So let's read more, um, of what they're going to have here. Um, so they're going to have it at a maximum of 120% of the area's median income. So one person apartment would be $74,000 a year, two person, 84, 95, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so that, you get that. But depending on the number of bedrooms per apartment, the same number show rent limits in range between $1,860 and $3,400 per month. So if there's a one bedroom apartment for $1,800 out off Con County Road 208, that is way too much to be spending for a one bedroom apartment out on County Road 208. I mean, you are kind of close to everything in a way, um, but like, Location wise, like we rented our townhome out. It's a two bedroom townhome. Um, I think it's 1200 square feet with a garage and it backs up to a water feature. We rented that out for 1900 a month, but we rented it out to a couple, right? So that makes sense for two people. But if you're renting a one bedroom apartment, 
that that's ridiculous. You know, 1860, that's crazy. That's to me, that that's wild. And I know I, I live here and maybe I got the, the blinders on because I, I, I've lived other places too, where it's much, much more expensive for a one bedroom apartment, but they also had jobs that could support that. Now, could people go up to Jacksonville and get a job and, and make a little bit more money? Yeah. But I don't know how many people are going to be going out and getting a $74,000 a year job in Jacksonville. And that's just me being honest. I don't think there's that many jobs like that out in Jacksonville. Now, Based on this, like a one bedroom apartment, that could be two people and $1,800 a month shouldn't be too bad for two people. I would say most people make here like probably around $5,000 a month. You know, that's that's just a, a guesstimate. But if, if we're speaking my generation, you know, most of the people that are my, my age, they either in St. John's County, they pretty much work in the service industry. So they might make $200 a night when they, they work as a server or a bartender. Some bartenders can make really good money, but um, that, that makes it affordable if you're living with someone. And I think that's also part of kind of the growing pains of our area. And I've talked about this before too, is really like Jacksonville is a growing metropolitan area. It doesn't seem like it's going to stop. And the surrounding areas are also affected by that. St. John's County has its own little thing going on down here because of downtown St. Augustine, the historic aspect of it, our beautiful beaches, the school district, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we're just south of Jacksonville. So if you do need to work there, um, it's great. But in most metropolitan areas, you have to commute into work and it's more than 20 minutes for sure. I mean, when I lived in New York, I took the subway into downtown Manhattan. I lived two express stops from downtown Manhattan. It still took me an hour to get to my job, right? So, it, and that was standard. That was actually a short commute, which is crazy, um, especially now I work from home. So, um, but I do commute to, you know, it took me 25, actually it took me 35 minutes to get to the appointment um, where I was off County Road 208 because I got stuck in traffic on 16. Um, so, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's affordable housing, you know, at $1,800. It's like, well, that just seems like you're gouging the people that live here because if, if it's affordable housing, it's meant to be, meant to be workforce housing. You know, average county employee makes like $50,000, maybe $55,000 a year. So let's say after taxes, you make $45,000 a year. You know, that's not, that's not even $4,000 a month. So if you're spending almost $2,000 a month on your housing, you have 50% to cover everything else. That's not a whole lot. So I don't know, CB, I appreciate you sending me this, send this to me. And guys, if you do see any articles you want me to cover, um, send them to me through email and I'll uh, make sure make sure to read them um, for my live stream. If it's relevant, of course, you know, if you send me something funky, I'm not going to watch it. Um, I don't know what that means. Un, un -ad. Oh, oh, like how it was written. Yeah. So it was written unaffordable housing. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Sorry. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, things are just changing so drastically here. And, and that's a hard thing. It's we're, we're at the growing pain. So now, like, if you want a good job, you got to go up to Jacksonville. you got to be willing to commute at least 45 minutes. And that's something that people here aren't used to. They're used to getting everywhere they needed to go in 20 minutes and having affordable housing. And that's just, it's just changed overnight, seemingly, because it's all really happened since the pandemic. Either way, on to the next news story, guys. Um, pop this up. If you have any questions about what I'm covering here, just let me know. Um, bah, bah, bah. so this is something that we've been covering, but Bass Pro is coming to St. John's County. It's 130,000 square foot Bass Pro. Um, it's on 2.3 acres and they're also building an outdoor boat and ATV showroom. Uh, the estimated cost is 22.3 million and it's going out by the Costco and Bucky's off of International Gulf Parkway. Um, and when it is done, they're going to have 115 people that are going to be working there at the new location. Um, so if you're not familiar with Bass Pro, it's a huge, you know, outdoor, you know, fishing, boating, hiking, all that kind of stuff, huge outdoor store. Um, and they've been looking for a location within St. Not St. John's County necessarily, but Northeastern Florida that's accessible to everything. Now, the one thing with this area is that it's just North of where we're at here on County Tour 208. We're seeing a ton of traffic and a ton of development here because of Costco, because of Bucky's. Um, and that's right here. So I believe the, um, the Bass Pro is going to be right next to it. So just south of where Costco is on World Commerce Parkway. Um, so that's going to bring more traffic to the area as well, but also be super convenient. I love having Costco there. It's fantastic. We go that my, my wife was just there uh, today. 
I get my gas there. It's always like 10 to 20 cents cheaper. Same with Bucky's. Bucky's is actually normally pretty cheap. But what I wanted to say about this is this is also going to be something where, yeah, maybe it doesn't seem that accessible to the rest of the county now, but they're also building this first coast expressway, guys. So this part is already completed, but they're going to make it come through here. It's going to cross through Green Cove Springs. They're essentially going to be eliminating 16 and using that, that bridge. And it's going to come straight across over to 95. And then you're going to have, be able to go one exit south to, to that area there. So I expect a lot more people are going to be heading to that area because you got the Costco there, you go to Bass Pro, you can knock out a lot of stuff within a little bit. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that? You live in the area, you're excited about that. Um, to me, it doesn't really matter. You know, um, there's plenty of boating and fishing stores in the area. But uh, if you're a hunting person, I, I know it's great there. Um, and they, they do have a lot. I, I've only been to Bass Pros up north, though. So um, on to the next news story. Let me know what you think about that. Um, uh, uh, all right, now this is something I'm actually pretty excited about. Um, me and my wife talked about getting tickets for this year, but um, Sing Out Loud Festival this past year, the Black Keys came, um, Mumford and Sums came, a couple of other bands um, that I wasn't really too familiar with. And that's kind of the same thing here. Um, I just thought it was a really well put together festival. It was something that we need is in September of this year. So September is definitely a slower month for our area. So it definitely helps out with our local economy, which I'm all for. Um, Eric Church is one of the guys I know. He's going to be headlining it on Sunday. And then uh, this guy apparently is super popular. I've never heard of him, um, but he's also going to be headlining as well, uh, the Sing Out Loud Festival. So this is held on Francis Field in downtown St. Augustine. This past year, I think they said they had 32,000 people that showed up to Sing Out Loud. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure. I was there. I mean, there was a ton of people. Um, but I don't know if it was 32,000 might, might've been 16,000 each day, but I'm not sure we're, we're looking into getting tickets and we also might do, um, a ticket giveaway here as well. So stay on top of that. I think it's a great thing for our area. I, I love live music. I love festivals. It's a lot of fun. So I want this, this program. That was the first time they did it. Well, they did it several, several years ago. I think it was over a decade ago at that same location. But I think they're going to continue doing it year after year. It's going to become a staple here in St. John's County, which overall I think is a good thing. So let's, I will say though, I, I do think last year's lineup was better, but I just like that music better. Eric Church, I do love. He's a great artist, um, but I just don't know Noah, Noah Can. So I'll check him out. I'll see what's going on. You know, maybe he's decent. All right. So I got one, two. I got two news stories left here, guys. So um, St. John's County District begins acquisition process of North Beach Utilities. Um, so they give them the green light to utility district to begin the acquisition pro process of MBU, North Beach Utilities, for wa water and wastewater services catering to approximately 1,400 customers in Volano Beach area. Um, so with that, um, I think that's going to be an investment. In, yep, so that's a good thing. Uh, investment into your infrastructure, um, which is going to be short and long-term benefits for the people living in Volano Beach. I'm not exactly sure if you guys are watching this right now. I'd love to know if you're if you're living in Volano Beach, what your experience is with them. Um, see if it's any if it's going to get any better, or any worse, or what what really made people want to push it over to them. I think overall it's a good thing. You get plugged into the rest of town here. Um, but just a short little news story I wanted to cover there. This is going to be our last one, guys. So if you do have any questions, fire them off. Um, and this is something uh, which we seem to, seems to be happening more and more lately. I was just talking to a buyer today, and um, he works for he's a police officer for the Florida um, Fish and Wildlife Commission, and I think that's FWC. I believe that's what it is. Um, and he actually had to report to this site, and he said that he couldn't sleep last night because two people died in this plane crash. And apparently over the past year, we've had seven small engine plane crashes um, within our local area, which is uh, seems like a lot to me. I don't know how often those planes fail. Um, typically, um, they don't always die. Um, but he said that pretty much, you know, he had to be on scene for these people. And the reason he had trouble sleeping is because from like the waist down, they were just like, they were just mincemeat. There was nothing going on down there. So, um, pretty crazy but yeah um it, we have a small airport here called the northeastern florida regional airport We're talking about bringing commercial planes in there and having some more commercial flights um, but as of right now it's pretty much all private planes small engine planes and northrop grumman that fly out of there um northrop grumman isn't crashing any planes but it's a lot of these small engine planes so um 
one, if you're living in the area, it kind of makes it a little scary. We looked at a house with this buyer right around the corner from that. And his wife was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. I don't want to live here because the plane just crashed today or yesterday. I don't want to be in the path of if a plane just crashes, you know, if they have an engine failure when they're taking off or landing, whichever that is. CB, we got one question here. Yeah, it's a question, but more of the truth that he's saying. Guys, if you have any questions, I'm going to get off here in a bit, but fire them off below. We'll get them answered. Um, CB, did you see where the Blue Hen in Lincolnville is moving to West King? I did see that. Um, so little interesting thing. Uh, the Blue Hen is a great breakfast spot over in uh, Lincolnville as of right now. They're closing up shop. They're moving over to the West King section of St. Augustine, which you guys know I live here in West King. I bought a home here last year. In the past, me and my wife talked about it yesterday, and we named between commercial and residential projects that we know right on West King, we know of 10 different projects that are going on or going to be finished within the year of us living here. So business has been moving here. Um, people are fixing up homes. Um, it, it, just, it just seems like there's a lot going on here in West King. Uh, rezoning's happening, and I think there's a reason for that. I think that West King is going, and this is just me, talking out of my ass essentially but um i think west king is going to be the area where saint augustine like where locals hang out i think they want to make that kind of a main street that's not as as well trafficked as downtown saint augustine because downtown has become really outside of a couple months here for the year it used to be a place where you could go downtown with your friends and hang out pretty easily but now because of the increase in tourism that we've had since the pandemic it does make it a lot more difficult to find parking, go downtown and hang out. They've also increased the hours for what you have to charge for park or for the parking meters, which is really annoying. Um, and they're like, oh, well, you get to discount your locals. Like, I don't want to pay at all. So, uh, but that's what it is. It's part of a growing city. Um, I, I Very much so if you live in like New York, you know, there's not, you don't go to Times Square. You never go to Times Square unless you have like friends that come in from, they've never been in New York before, they want to go check it out. So, so yeah. Um, Downtown St. Augustine has become so so much more of a novelty in the tourist town that a lot of people that live here are like, you know what, I'll just go hang out somewhere else, go to St. Augustine Beach. They're, they're not going to go hang out in downtown. So I think West Augustine is going to start pulling some traffic this way and also developing that main street. And when you, CB, you let me know what you think, but um, when you drive down West King, um, it, it really does have like pockets where there's just vacant land that could be switched over to commercial very easily and really change this area. And we're starting to see businesses remodel. We're starting to see businesses move in. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for it. Uh, haven't tried Ruby's yet though. I want to try Ruby's that just opened up this year. A little, uh, like chicken ribs spot right here on uh, West King. Um, they just remodeled a commercial building right up the street from me. My dog barking outside. Um, and then uh, they just, they're finishing up a duplex by me right on uh, West King. Out of the pharmacy, they have Muggsies, they have Real Peel, um, Sailbird Distillery open, you get cocktails and everything around right there. And then the Blue Hen is moving over. So the West Egg is over here too. The West Egg is a great breakfast spot, but the Blue Hen is moving over to West King Street from the Lincolnville location. I think they cited because the rent in downtown. Oh, I, really downtown St. Augustine, Lincolnville is just south of it, uh, was too expensive for them. So they're moving over here to West King, um, which I think is going to be really exciting because our restaurant scene on West King is starting to pick up really, really well. So like I said, we have the West Egg. Uh, we're going to have the Blue Hen. We have two really great food trucks, like really stellar food trucks that are they're camped out. One's behind the bog. That's uh, Tacos My Blessing. Best tacos in St. Augustine, hands down. Um, Muggsy's Bar, which is a great little bar. They're, they're partners with Planet Sarbez. If you, um, they're, they're owned by the same people, That's which is in Davis Shores. But Muggsy's is a great little bar. Pretty much every time I go by there, it's packed. They also have Real Peel Pizza, Pizza Truck, right outside of there. That's actually my favorite pizza place now in town. They make like little, you know, I don't know, 12-inch pies, personal pies, and they're fantastic. He has a whole bunch of different flavors, um, does a lot of cool stuff out of that truck. Um, they also have Murphy's Homestyle to Go. Um, Buena Onda, I'm not sure if I said that already, Buena Onda, which is a vegan restaurant. Um, and then they also have Maracuya, which is like a Peruvian coffee shop, uh, dessert and wine bar, super cute little spot. And, uh, they, they serve like empanadas and cheesecakes and all that. Kind of, it's very, very good. It's my favorite place to get coffee in town now, my favorite coffee shop in general. So I just think there's some really cool things going on. I don't know, CB, you tell me, 
Um, we'll have to meet up for a cup of coffee or something, man, because uh, I really I really like what's going on here in West Augustine. And you know what? I'm going to pitch this. Uh, guys, I will be gone. Me and my wife are going on our honeymoon. We're taking a two-week honeymoon. We're going to Japan and Thailand. Super stoked for that. Um, never been to either of those places. It's going to be a completely new experience. Um, so I'm going to be gone for a good bit, but I'll be accessible through email. I'll have Wi-Fi, so I'll have my phone on me no matter what. Um, but when I get back, this is what I want to talk about. When I get back, I'm starting a community group, and it's going to be to pick up trash off, off of West King Street. West King has some beautiful, beautiful areas. Really, if you live in St. Augustine South, it's comparable to St. Augustine South in terms of like you have these, you know, beautiful canopied streets with these massive trees with Spanish moss on them. The neighborhood itself just needs a little bit of love from the people. Like we just need to pick up a little bit of trash. We need to clean up a little bit. I have a lot of projects in my head that I'm going to do for my little corner. But in general, I'm starting a community group every Sunday at 10 a.m. We'll be picking up trash. You might have already seen me out there picking up trash. I do it pretty much every Sunday. And then I go get a little treat at Maracuya, I treat myself, you know. Um, but that's also the other thing. Uh, so we're partnering with Maracuya. They're, they say, hey, if you if you take a picture with the bag of trash or whatever, you say, hey, I, you know, I picked up trash in West King. They're going to give you 10% off. So super stoked on that. Glad to have them as like a partner because um, he lives in West King as well, or, or West Augustine. So yeah, come and join me. It'll be once I get back from my honeymoon, but that first Sunday I plan on doing it. So I'll be picking up trash. I'm going to, I'm going to buy some grabbers. I'll bring the bags, whatever, come and help me out. Um, I'd love it. Um, be cool to see you guys. Uh, hopefully you come, but yeah, so I'll let you know on that official date, but after this live stream, there won't be a live stream probably for two weeks, unless I'm feeling froggy in Japan or Thailand and I got nothing to do at two in the morning, you know? So, um, so yeah, guys, um, that's it. Hope you guys are doing well. If you are looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, love to be able to help you out. Um, reach out to me directly, shoot me a call, text, or email. Um, all my information is listed on my YouTube page. I think I have all that right here too, maybe. Oh, here we go. Um, so if you do have any questions about buying or selling or investing here in the area, contact information is right there. I'll leave it up there. I'll kind of ramble on for a second. So if you do need to take it down, it is right there. Um, but come, you know, and, and I saw a couple of people jumped on here. So Sunday, 10 a.m., um, when I get back from my honeymoon, so we're getting back the 17th. So let me just give you a date on that. I'll put it in my calendar. So I make sure that I don't disappoint you guys. Um, so it'll be April 21st is when we're going to start this thing. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to buy the grabbers. I'm going to, so I'll probably have like, I have two already. I'll probably grab five extra because I don't expect a whole bunch of people to be down my door to pick up trash. Uh, but every Sunday at 10 a.m., I want to make this a thing. Eventually, there's not going to be any trash to pick up, which is going to be cool. Um, I, and I, I've already noticed, like, just from me doing my neighborhood, like, there's really nothing going on. Like, I have to walk a block or so now, which I'm super thankful for. Because uh, before, I used to pick up a whole bag of trash in 30 minutes. And, uh, and uh, you know, which is crazy. So, um, that being said, I think eventually, once we get all the trash, I think I want to change it into something where... Um, we just take the green space along West King and either, you know, we get some volunteer work in there, of course, but also get maybe some people that some local businesses, I know there's a landscape, so I'm going to ask them, I don't know. So I won't go in there saying that, I'm, you know, they promise to do this, but there's a landscape supply store that's supposed to be opening here on West King as well. I'm going to see if I can partner with them. Maybe hopefully they give me some material such as like fill dirt and I can, you know, do the work and like, Hey, I'll, I'll clear out this strip of grass. And then we'll put fly, wildflowers in there, you know, and then because there's a lot of sections of, of the sidewalk that's lining the street that's supposed to be grass where it's really just sand, it's just dirt, just gravel, whatever it is. It doesn't look good. So I'd love to be able to do that after we get the trash all taken care of. So Sunday, the what did I say? Oh, my God, I missed it again. Sunday, the 21st, 10 a.m. Um, come join me. But guys, until next time, I'll see you every Wednesday at 8 p.m., but the next two weeks will be on my honeymoon, so keep that in mind. Um, but hope you guys are well. Have a good one. See you later.